Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate the third Wednesday in Advent, December 20th, and the church today remembers Saint Amon and his companions. <coughs> Excuse me. Saint Amon was one of the Theb Theban martyrs who were converted by Egyptian Christians. Amon, along with Ignaz, Ptolemy, Theophilus, and Zeno, were guards during the persecution of Christians in the reign of the Emperor Decius. During the torture and trial of these prisoners, Amon and his fellow guards were converted to Christ. They cheered the faithfulness of the Christians under torture and urged them to endure in their courage. As a result, Amon and the others became prisoners. They were beheaded, displaying the same Christian constancy as the others who inspired them. So St. Amon and those who were with you, for your witness to our Lord, we ask you to please, please pray for us today. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us take a moment, confess our sins to God in ways that we have failed him and our neighbor in thought, word, deed, and omission, so we may worthily participate in this holy sacrifice. Please now make an examination of your conscience. Let us say together the first form of the Confidier found on page 66 if you're following along. Almighty Father, you know my deepest secrets. I confess that I have, through my own fault, sinned against your holy laws in my thoughts, in my words, and what I have done or failed to do. I sincerely regret my sins, and I am sorry for offending you. I ask, Father, that in your mercy you pardon my sins. I promise to change my way of living so that through a deeper holiness I may better serve you throughout the rest of my life. I ask, Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. For your penance, I would ask you to say, one our Father and one Hail Mary. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again. Rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. You are near, O Lord. By your edict, give me life. I rejoice at your promise as one who has found rich spoil. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christ eleison. Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, as we lovingly prepare to celebrate the coming of your Son, enlighten our minds and fill us with your grace, that we may recognize the one who stands among us. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. Let it be deep as the netherworld or high as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not ask. I will not tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David, 
Is it not enough for you to weary men? Must you also weary my God? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, let the Lord enter. He is the king of glory. Let the Lord enter. He is the king of glory. The Lord's are the earth in its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Let the Lord enter. He is the king of glory. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place? He whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. Let the Lord enter. He is the king of glory. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. Let the Lord enter. He is the King of glory. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. O key of David, opening the gates of God's eternal kingdom, come and free the prisoners of darkness. Alleluia, alleluia. May Almighty God cleanse my heart and my lips so I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be called great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, yesterday we looked at the difference between the angel visiting Zechariah and the angel visiting Mary. But today we have something more we look at. Because both of them were a little bit afraid, I guess. Zechariah, because he sees this angel appear in front of him and is told that he's going to be a father, his wife's going to conceive in old age. Even though he doubted, his faith failed a little bit, but God's punishment was a corrective for him. Now for Mary, she was afraid as well because her is not in the natural order of things the way that she conceived a child. It is supernatural. How much more fearful would one be in that situation? And all of the scandal surrounding that, that people would perceive, although it wasn't scandalous, people would perceive it to be so. Even Joseph, until he had the dream. And this was the fulfillment of the prophecy given to Ahaz in Isaiah. 
virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. About five, six hundred years before it happened, it was prophesied by Isaiah. What beautiful thing that is to have a prophecy come true, even though it took 600 years. And brothers and sisters, we have a prophecy that Christ will come one more time. We've been waiting 2,000 years almost for this, darn near. And it hasn't come yet. But some, some might tend to go one or two ways on this. One, think, ah, it's never going to happen. Or two, try to pin down a date. People have been doing that for centuries, for centuries. Especially these days, there's, I can't tell you how many prophecies of dates I've seen come and go by various false pro preachers, prophets. And yet they've all been wrong because only the Father knows the day and the hour. That means we must be ready when he comes again. He came once and gives us the opportunity for salvation. He gives us the opportunity to turn away from our sin, to repent, and to come back to him. A beautiful gift. A beautiful gift. The opportunity to come back to him and live with him for eternity. That's why this happened. Today's gospel. That's why the angel was sent from God to get Mary's assent, free choice, free will, to have the Son of God inside of her for nine months. And then to take care of him and raise him. Yes, Joseph as well as his father, foster father, earthly father, however you want to put it. That's the reason that we celebrate what we're going to celebrate in five short days. It's the reason we have a whole month, four weeks, to prepare for this, to remember, A, remember this beautiful thing. Secondly, to remind ourselves that we should always be prepared for when he comes again. Because do we want to be caught unprepared when he comes among us one more time? Do we want to be caught lacking in love and faith in him. That's why we need to remind ourselves almost constantly to repent and believe in the good news of the gospel. That is the reason we have had, that is the reason we celebrate the first coming of our Savior because we anticipate his second coming. The gift he gave us is the greatest gift ever. But are we prepared to fully receive it and embrace it? And yes, share it with others. Even though we personally can't bestow it, we can show others how to get it, how to accept it. It's out there for everybody. We just have to choose to accept it. Do we choose to accept it? Do we? We choose it by the way we make our day-to-day -day decisions. Do we choose it by going out of our way to help other people? Do we do it? Do we choose it by choosing to worship our Lord at least once a week and on holy days, as the church tells us? Or do we choose ourselves? Do we choose the easy way? Do we choose the world's way? God's way is not easy. All we need to do is look at the saints, like Saint Amon and those with him. This little brief little bit tells us so much. Saint Amon and his fellow guards watching the Christian prisoners and the way they reacted that turned their hearts to Christ and they were able to accept his gift. Do we have that faith that if we are under trial or persecution, the people will look at how we react to it and be converted? 
brothers and sisters, that should be our goal. Our goal should be to be like Amon, Ingens, Ptolemy, Theophilus, Zeno. Goal should even be to be like the Christians whom they witnessed under the Decian persecutions way back in the day. In the 200s, mid 200s, 250. Because that could happen today. It's happening in parts of the world today. It's happening in China today. The people, the Catholics who have not joined the patriotic church are being murdered, arrested, persecuted, and yes, murdered by the Chinese regime. The Russian Orthodox in Ukraine are being persecuted by the Ukrainian government. Christians in Gaza are being killed by both sides. My brothers and sisters, persecutions are happening in our world today, in Africa. In Africa, Christians are being killed in the Middle East, you name it, throughout the world. You don't think that could come here? My brothers and sisters, one thing I have learned in my little bit over half a century on this planet is that anything and everything is possible when the hearts of human beings are not aligned with God. The farther we get from God, Christ, as a society, as a world, the worse off we are. Because the farther we get from God, the closer we get to Satan, to the devil, Beelzebub, however you want to call him. <coughs> and that is chaos and destruction on the side of Satan. But on the side of Christ, if we endure in faith and love, and even serving as inspirations by our reactions, then yes, we have accepted that gift that God sent to us in his Son, of salvation for eternity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Knowing that all of our hope is in the Lord, we have confidence to approach God with our needs and the needs of the world. Our response is, come, Lord Jesus, come. Let the church may joyfully anticipate the coming of Christ with hearts prepared and faith renewed. We pray to the Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come for peace in our world, that those suffering in the darkness of war and violence in the Middle East, Ukraine, Africa, and throughout the world may know the nearness of the Lord. We pray to the Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come. For those who have separated themselves from God and his Son, as well as the church, that the Advent message of hope may bring the light of Christ to them through the work of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come the poor, the hungry, the brokenhearted, and the sick, especially Chuck Entis and those on our parish prayer list, that they may be fortified and blessed with the Lord's special favor. We pray to the Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come. For our own intentions, we hold deep in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come. For all the faithful departed and those who will die today, that they may live in eternal joy with God in the heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come. God of love and compassion, in your goodness fulfill our longing for your peace and hear the prayers we have brought before you, both spoken and unspoken. We ask all these things for your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. But you have given my heart more joy than they have when grain and wine abound. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. May it become for us the bread of life.
the mystery of this wine and water, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, may it become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, and bless this sacrifice which we have prepared for the glory of your holy name. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Receive this offering, most holy trinity, which we make in memory of the passion, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints. May they whose memory we honor on earth intercede for us in heaven. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the benefit of his holy church. Almighty God, you filled us with joy by the coming of your only begotten Son. Accept our offering and fulfill our hopes. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. For through the promised sending of Jesus Christ to earth for us, you've revealed your goodness and unending love. Sharing in the hope of patriarchs and prophets, may we worthily prepare a dwelling place for the coming Messiah in our hearts. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy sacrifice, the Mass continues with Eucharistic Prayer 4, which is found on page 88 if you're following along. Blessed are you. Lord of all majesty and King of eternal glory through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. In him your word was made flesh. In him the fullness of your grace was revealed in splendor. In all things he fulfilled your will and glorified your name. He proclaimed your kingdom to us. He broke the power of darkness over us. He took our guilt upon himself. He reconciled us to you and unlocked the new paradise for us. As the way, the truth, and the life he has revealed your love to us. <coughs> he humbled himself and became obedient even to death on a cross, and by rising, restored our life. On the night in which he was betrayed to undergo that suffering which he himself had chosen, he took bread into his hands, lifted his eyes to you as heavenly father, he gave thanks. He blessed the bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which is given for you. When supper had ended, he took the cup and gave thanks to you. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Your death, Lord Jesus, we proclaim. Your resurrection, we celebrate. Your returning glory, we await. Therefore, Father, we remember his saving passion, his glorious resurrection, his exaltation at your right hand. We 
await his coming in the fullness of majesty. We here set forth the sign of our faith in him who offered you the perfect sacrifice and gave for us eternal salvation. Send your Holy Spirit, the giver of life and holiness upon us and upon these gifts, the bread and wine of eternal life. Together, Holy Spirit, come to us. Fill us with your gift of grace. Take these gifts from our hands, Lord God, as an acceptable sacrifice through which we offer ourselves to you. So the bread which we break and the cup which we bless may be a sharing in the body and blood of your Son. May all who receive from your heavenly altar always remain united with you, together with all your saints and chosen ones, with the blessed and glorious Virgin Mary, the mother of our Lord, with Saint Amon and his companions, whose memories we keep today, with your prophets and apostles, with your martyrs and confessors, and with all who stand about your throne in praise and prayer. Bless your church throughout the world, grant it unity and peace. Renew the earth according to your promise. Remember all peoples and grant that all nations may give you thanks, worshiping and praising your holy name. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> Let's pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching and following divine example. We say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. On you stay. Qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, qui tollis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Let's say together the first communion prayer found on page 97. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me be parted from you. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Please join me now in the act of spiritual communion. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you, May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and Savior. Amen. Lord, may I possess with a pure heart that which I have taken as food. May the gift I have received bring me healing and strength now and forever.
You are my <coughs> help and my deliverer, my God. Do not delay. Let us pray. Loving Father, as we prepare for the coming of your Son through the sharing of this Eucharist, enrich us with the grace to accept his teachings without condition and fulfill his will. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me now in the prayer of St. Francis. Or, I'm sorry, the prayer of St. Michael. Holy Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please join me now in prayer for peace with the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in dying that we are born to eternal life. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, thank you so much for joining us for our Holy Mass today. We'll be back tomorrow at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. And if you are in Kiwani, there is a service hosted by the Kiwani Ministers Association, which will be here tomorrow at 6 p.m., the longest night service. It is particularly for those who have experienced loss in the last year or so and who find Christmas a bit of a burden. Joy, sorrow in the midst of joy. So we hope you have a wonderful day. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Remain in the state of grace. Fight evil wherever you find it and spread joy wherever you go. O come, O key of David, come and open wide our heavenly home. Make safe for us the heavenward road. And bar the way to death's abode. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to thee, O 